Hi there, welcome to the Custom Living Solutions Vodcast. Today I'll be answering the questions that some of our followers have emailed in to me. First up is Ron. Ron asks, what do I do with scraps of paper, sticky notes, things I've written on the backs of envelopes and napkins, etc.? I keep losing important stuff. Well, Ron, you're not alone in this. I have faced this challenge with many clients over the years. There's a couple things that you can do. First, if you want to have a low-tech solution, you might take all of those scraps of paper, maybe you search around your desk, your briefcase, if you're a woman, your purse, a man, your wallet. We put those things everywhere, right? So gather them all together. And then, again, if you're looking for a low-tech solution, you might tape those individual pieces of paper to a larger sheet of paper, or put them in a three-ring binder or in a notebook. Make sure they find their way into a home of some sort. That way you don't have to search all around your desk or your office or your briefcase or your purse trying to frantically find that scrap that you need. You'll know that at the very least they're all in one spot so you can flip through the notebook and find the one that you're looking for. Also it prevents them from getting lost. Especially if you tape or staple them in, they can't fall out, they can't mysteriously walk away like these things so often do. So gather them together and then get them into one spot. If you're looking for more of a high-tech solution, one thing you might want to try is using Evernote. Evernote is a great miniature database, essentially, for gathering all sorts of different types of information. And if you use your smartphone or your camera, you can take pictures of all of those different scraps of paper that you've written on, import them into Evernote, which is really easy, and then you can organize them inside of Evernote into notebooks by topic or by project that you're working on, or just a general notes one so that you can have all that stuff together and organized when you need it. So Ron, there's two different ways that you can attack this problem, either low-tech or high-tech. I recommend personally, if you have the ability to do so, put them into something high-tech like Evernote because you'll always have them. You never have to worry about throwing them out or getting a new notebook, etc. But the low-tech version works just as well. Choose one and see what works better for you. Our next question comes from Blanche. Blanche asks, I've been making PDFs to save me from papers piling up. Do the PDFs take up more room on my hard drive than Word documents? Blanche, that's a really good question. They're both electronic documents, but they're different file formats. So Word documents typically have just text in them, and text is one of the tiniest forms of files that you can actually have. So you could have a book-length Word document that's file size is very, very small, unless it has images or any sorts of imported media inside of it. Typically, Word documents are very tiny. PDFs, on the other hand, can have all sorts of things inside of them. In addition to just text, typically PDFs include things like images or links to other things. And also, and especially if they're scanned documents, PDFs can be extremely large. Your PDF software that you use for scanning, um, typically your scanner will come with software that lets you create PDFs, has multiple settings inside of it. And you can scan things in high resolution, low resolution, black and white, color, single-sided, double-sided, depending on the scanner that you have. And if you're scanning things at high resolution and in color and double-sided, the resulting files that you create if they're PDFs can be surprisingly large. So you might want to play with the settings in your scanner Make sure that you're scanning at the resolution that you need, not necessarily the best possible quality. Because if you scan something in black and white at low resolution, enough to capture the text, your file size of your PDF will be much, much smaller than if you scanned it in full resolution and in full color. Just think about what you need to do with that PDF after you scan it, and make sure you scan appropriately for those needs. So hopefully that answers your question, Blanche. Next question, also from Blanche. Thank you for sending in a couple. What should I do with screen captures that I make slides of during a webinar? Do they take up too much space for occasional use? Well, screen captures are image files, and image files can be of all sorts of different file sizes. Typically, a screen capture will be matched to the resolution of your screen. So if you have a really high resolution screen, the screen capture itself, the image that's created, may be quite large in terms of file size. If your screen resolution is low, the resulting file may not be that big. Even if you have a screen that's really big and at high resolution, if you're taking a bunch of screen grabs, they probably won't add up to that much file space. I wouldn't be too concerned about it unless you have a very small hard drive. However, I would encourage you to periodically go back through those screen grabs that you've made from webinars or online resources and edit out, delete the ones that you don't need. 
because typically those things lose value over time. So weed through them periodically, and that will help keep the overall file storage space for your screen captures relatively small and in check. Well, thanks all of you for sending in your questions. If you have a question and would like to see me answer it for you here on the vodcast, just email me at joshua at customlivingsolutions.com, and hopefully your question will get answered on an upcoming edition. Thanks, and I look forward to seeing you again very soon.